Hey guys, it's Gia from Smart Home Makers. Got our Christmas tree out and as every year, the question is, who's going to go and switch off the Christmas lights in the evening? Well, if you've got that problem, then follow through this video because I'm going to be using this smart plug to automate all of that with Home Assistant. Today, I'll be reviewing this TP-Link CASA with energy monitoring and Wi-Fi. I'll be integrating it into Home Assistant and I'll then show you how it all works with a simple automation with a motion sensor. As always, this is an unbiased review. I purchased this with my own money, so no one's sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's open this box up. First of all, just to let you know, I purchased this off from Amazon UK at around £14.99. So we can say uh, not cheap, the cheapest, but not the most expensive in terms of uh, smart plugs. Interesting feature was the uh, compatibility with Home Assistant and the actual energy monitoring feature, which I wanted to use to, uh, to you know, do some uh, cool automations with it. So a few things to note. There's no hub required, so you can actually use this without a hub, which is fantastic. You need to download the app the Casa Smart app to set this all up. It comes out of the box and works with Google Assistant and a Amazon Echo, which is fantastic. But I'll be trying to pair this into Home Assistant. If you don't know what Home Assistant is, it's an open source home automation platform, which uh, I think is really cool. And you can check out links in the description to find out more about that. So let's get this out of the box. We've got a little, um, booklet with some instructions what to do it should be quite intuitive okay so first impressions it is chunky it's a chunky chunky guy uh, I'll put some measurements up when I get my tape measure out but uh, it has got some weight to it so we've got maximum we've got input as you can see here 10240 and uh, 50 and 60 Hertz 13 amps so this gives you an idea, made in China, designed in California. This runs on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, at 802.11 standard. So that's pretty standard for these devices, I, would, I would believe. We'll see if this button is able to, uh, if this is for resyncing, potentially this one's for turning on, turning off the plug manually. So I think it's just, we just left actually plug this in and see how this all works. So the app to download is the Casa Smart app. There's quite a few apps from TP-Link, but that is the correct one to get. So I've got this extension lead, and I'm gonna plug this in, and I've got another standard plug, so you can actually see the difference in terms of uh, dimension. So let me plug it in. So I made a click sound, and you can actually see this light turned on. It looks like it's obviously gonna to try to pair up to Wi-Fi. So I'm clicking it and I can, I can hear like a spring, a relay sort of thing. So just to compare this against standard socket, you can see this is quite bulky. This might be a deal breaker for some of you because it might be quite ugly on the wall and it might not pass the uh, partner approval factor. So, you know, looks are also part of this. I guess it would depend on where, where you're setting this up, if this is going to be uh, hidden or if there's going to be really in the way and also it's also limiting in terms of space Because it also limits where you can actually put this But let me download the app now and uh, we can uh, get it all configured If you're getting value out of this video Remember smash that like button subscribe and let me know some automations that you are thinking to use with these smart plug devices So I'm with the iOS device now. We need local network permission needed so we need to set that all up. I'm going to go back to the app now. So I'm just going to tap, I've already given local network permission. At this stage, we need to create an account. Setting my location as United Kingdom. So after registering the email address and uh, confirming the registration, I'm now well giving uh, access to my location. This is to determine sunrise and sunset times. I would assume you can allow or disallow. I'm going to allow, but uh, if you're going to use Home Assistant, you might not need it. I might just allow only once. So you've got some options here to, um, you know, give uh, stay up to date with products, which I'm going to take off. Anonymous analytics, 
bug reports are fine with that. So that's all set up. So we've got no devices yet. So, oh, found one device. That's good. So we'll say view all. We've got pre-configured devices. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure if we need to press the plus button now. Local permissions needed. Yeah, I've already done that. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so we can add the device. Okay, we're going to say smart plugs, HS10. Plug in your smart plug and the Wi-Fi light will turn solid orange. It's actually blinking. It's not really solid. Let's just go next. After about 15 seconds, the Wi-Fi light should start blinking orange and green. Yeah, that's happening. So now we need to connect to the smart plug Wi-Fi. I'll do that now. So I connected to the TP-Link Wi-Fi access point. It's um, scanning. It says it could take a few minutes to establish the connection. Now we can give it a name, device name. I'm going to call it Christmas tree. Customized icon. No, we'll use a standard one. Congratulations. You've configured your smart lights ready to use. Sounds good. So now from here you should be able to turn on and turn off. So I'll show you. Yeah, tick, tick. Okay, so it's pretty much instant. And now I'm gonna plug in the device to actually see if it all works. And what I'll do is now, I'll turn my uh, lamp off that I'm using for the video. As you can see, what I'll do is I'll move this in here, on here. It actually becomes, it's quite a lot of bark there. And what I'll do is turn it back on from the switch. Okay, so you can see it's on. So if I press the button, it goes off. Press the button back on. And let's do it from the app. Off, on. Okay, so quite straightforward really. It's all working. Now we're gonna try and get this all paired up into Home Assistant. Right, so now we're in Home Assistant and let's get this all configured. Let's go to Configurations, Integrations and scroll down to the bottom and find Add Integrations. Then in the search bar, search for TP-Link, Casa Smart, Submit and let's see if it gets picked up automatically. Right, so we successfully you can find our Christmas tree, assign it to an area, for example, in the kitchen, like I'm doing. And we can have a look at the devices, so we can see we've got a device here. It's all good. And uh, let's double check the entity ID. Scroll back down, entity ID, and we can see it. it's Chris switch dot Christmas underscore tree. So all of that is quite good. Let's look at these energy monitoring capabilities of this smart plug. So go to the developer tools and go to your switch. Uh, my one's called switch Christmas tree. And in there you've got our stage on and off, which is fantastic. But look at the attributes. You can find out quite a lot of information here. Current power, the total energy, the voltage. I think A stands for ampere. So you've also got today energy. So you can start having a look at these metrics and then collect them, potentially use them in automations. Now we know that Christmas tree doesn't really um, take up that much energy but for example you could if you were to use this with a washing machine with a similar type of device then you can get notified when there is no more energy going through meaning it's sort of done what it needs to do so it depends on what type of appliance you actually have this automation is very simple to do um, but I'm using an existing one called turn on LED strip so it originally started like that and then it sort of changed and in here, I'm just going to add another service, switch.turn underscore on. 
and the entity ID is, is going to be switch dot Christmas underscore tree. Now that should be enough to get this Christmas tree up and running. Save that and reload and we're good to go. Now obviously you're going to need to do the same thing if you have an automation that turns off things so you can get that all working fine. Now in the next video I'll be reviewing the next smart plug and see how this compares against the TP-Link. At the end of the whole series I'm going to compare all five of them and going to find out which one is the best smart plug for you. So subscribe and like to the channel. Comment down below if you're currently using a smart plug and want me to check it out. Hopefully I've picked the five most popular ones to review. But let's find out and stay safe.